Welcome, Travis. Thanks for joining us. First things first, what the heck is orchestration? That's a good question. Uh, orchestration is the automated configuration, the management and coordination of uh, different computer systems. Um, it's sort of like how an orchestra provides you know, the harmony among the different uh, musicians. Um, so if you think back to the days of servers in closets, you know, people would manually log in uh, to an operating system, set up the operating system, and install the application. Um, if they needed you know, more, if they need more horsepower, they would just make a bigger box. So uh, those days are gone. Now we have um, you know, different, different tools for, um, for building out systems uh, reliably, um, but even not just deploying applications. There's also you know, the remediation aspects of, um, of orchestration. So remediating issues, using automated systems to bring the, uh, the system back online. That's awesome. That actually gets right to my next question, which is what are some examples of orchestration? Yeah, so I think um, there's kind of two concepts. Uh, well, there's a lot of different concepts. You know, it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's generally automating any kind of computer system, but a lot of times people will use it in terms of uh, the term in terms of uh, container orchestration. So tools like uh, Kubernetes being able to orchestrate all these different uh, containers uh, to be able to scale, um, you know, scale these individual operating systems, um, you know, efficiently, uh, scrape the logs and provide uh, ways of, you know, restarting them. Um, you know, in the X matters world, you know, we talk about orchestration in uh, remediation. So executing commands to, uh, to resolve an issue to, you know, um, maybe kill a pod in Kubernetes or um, even reboot a server. There are still servers used today. Um, you know, all, all kinds of different things uh, that we can use. That's very cool. So, so basically, it's helping to automate these kind of repeatable processes that would typically be manual and surely take a lot of time. And now we're just configuring and telling the systems to, to essentially go and execute this on their own. Right. Is that true? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, humans aren't very good at doing the same things over and over again. <laughs> you know, they either get bored or they miss something. Uh, but computers, on the other hand, are very good at, you know, doing, doing things over and over again the same way, reliably. So it's no wonder that we're seeing orchestration everywhere these days. And Travis, in your opinion, is this a passing trend or is this something we'll continue to see for years to come? Yeah, no, I think we're definitely going to see wider adoption among um, orchestration in general. Uh, it, it provides kind of a good framework or uh, approach to solving problems such as, uh, you know, building things out at scale. Um, reliably, um, and then also, you know, on the remediation side, um, being able to reduce the toil. So the, the work that's important and needs to be done, uh, but, you know, takes away from the troubleshooting process. So, you know, um, these are all important steps that need to be taken, but really, if a computer can do it, then we should let it do, a computer do that, uh, rather than having, taking up a person's time, you know, to do, do those actions or, um, or anything else. That makes sense. Well, Travis, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank you for walking us through orchestration. I know I've learned a lot and hopefully all y'all watching have also learned something. So thank you, Travis. This was Thanks. awesome. Thanks for having and, me. And for all of y'all out there watching, I hope that you've learned something and that you can look forward to a symphony of software development in your future. Thanks, y'all. See you next time.